Okay, so in this tutorial, I figured I'd give you guys some tips on how to use stipples in drawing, ink drawing. Okay, and stippling is pretty much just drawing with dots, okay, or points. Now, um, I think uh, the first thing you should practice um, when you're drawing with stipples is learning how to shade basic forms. So, say for example, um, let's let's start with a uh, a circle. All right, so say we have a little circle there, like that. And, um, of course, you should practice with drawing basic forms. I said like a circle or and, not or, and like a, a block and a cylinder. You can shade these forms, you know, these types of basic, these are the basic forms you should always practice with. Like an egg, you know, uh, a cone. These are simple forms. Uh, See, these are very, very, very simple forms, all right? Now, in addition to this, it's also good to practice using a, making a value scale. It's always the number one way of practicing um, shading in any technique. Even when you're painting, you start with a value scale. And then from a value scale, you move on to rendering basic forms. I'm not going to do all of these, and you know, that will take me forever. But I'm just going to give you some tips now. The most obvious thing to learn. See, the thing is with pens like these, or any pen actually, um, I think we tend to have a habit of of pressing too hard on it, and you really don't need to. Okay, you don't really need to press that harder because once you just make contact, it will leave a mark. See that? Now you barely see it here because I'm using my uh, 005. Now, just for clarity's sake, so you can see it, I'm going to use a 08. Okay. Um, now you should practice first of all making um, consistent marks right you should be able to put a series of dots and notice what I'm doing I'm not pressing too hard because the thing is when you press too hard you will make it see a little bit darker than see I'm gonna press really hard here what happens is that the dots are not as consistent in shape as if you just lightly tap on the paper that's all I'm doing here I'm just lightly tapping I'm not pressing hard as here and plus when you press too hard it's not good for the tip of your pen all right so practice just being consistent you should be able to fill an area like this I'm just doing random dots here okay but I'm being consistent and what do I mean by being consistent okay I will not be consistent on this side. See how you could, the, most of the dots are almost evenly spaced. You can say, here, if you're not being consistent, it will look like this. You see the difference? You see the difference? This is not consistent. Okay? Consistent. <laughs> Alright? So, that's the thing. You have to practice being consistent. So, <clears throat> Now, unless you're doing this deliberately to create texture, then I can understand. But if you're doing it to shade, it's good to do this. Why is it important? Well, because when you do this, you can unintentionally draw something that you didn't intend or create detail or suggest detail that you didn't intend. All right? You can create texture that you didn't intend. It's good to have some control over what you're doing. See, like here I was being very consistent. Here I was being consistent. Now, after you've learned how to cover a certain amount of space with a consistent amount of stipples, then you can go on to gradation. And that means going from an area of dark to light. All right, you want to be able to do that with stipples. So that means, now, this is an interesting trick. So with stipples, it's good to go from light to dark. Yes, you can also do this, go dark, and then gradually make them more spaced out you can do that as well there's nothing wrong with that but it's good to keep things light and then go darker afterwards and it's good you will be tempted to make a solid black like shade in the black but don't do it because a black like this is different from a black created with stipples why because the black that's created by stipples has a certain texture that is consistent with the rest of the stippled area this will create an area that will stand out maybe too much and it may create a contrast or draw attention unwarranted attention attention that you may not want in your drawing okay so it's good to keep be consistent even when you're creating a black you'll be tempted to shade it in but don't do it 
instead create the black with the stipples and you can leave it with some white showing like that all right i'm going to do a drawing of an eye down here so you'll, you'll see exactly what i mean now as you do that now you can go on to creating your little value scale here and you're basically as i said going from light to dark so say for example um let's say i have another box here okay like that now um i can leave this one white i'm going to leave it the color of the paper so here has a lowest value and it's going to get deeper as it goes towards black so this has the lowest value this may be next and it gets gradually deeper as it goes across but notice what I'm doing here I'm making it all pretty much consistent going across see then I can make this one a little bit darker see you can vary vary this according to how deep you want the values or how sharp you want the change in value to be so now what I mean is you can go from this could be darker and then this sub subsequently darker you know so you can be successively getting darker across so this these are relatively light values all right and you may not necessarily want to go completely black or not see and then you'd apply this to uh, these basic forms after you've mastered this okay it's really a fun thing to do it's very time consuming and meticulous but the drawings can end up looking really beautiful so how would I shade like a basic form like this you know I'll just do this one as an example of course a block is going to be easiest because it's pretty much just joining straight flat planes like this okay just draw um, depending on where you've seen the light coming from the light is coming from up top here this will be lightest this will be middle value and this will be the deep value so using three values when you're doing a form like this like a sphere here first thing I would do is separate the area of of light from shadow right and then I would lightly outline the shape now I'd use less dots to outline the form that's the part of the form that's in light okay to make it consistent with the light and shadow pattern and then in here you can even start filling in the shadow area so I'm not even doing any gradation yet. All right? right now I'm just separating light from shadow. Then after this, I start darkening the area between the light and the shadow area. So this is like the shadow core, or the shadow border as I call it. Start darkening that. And you could even you know, outline the, the cast shadow if you want. So here's a little cast shadow here. Of course, with cast shadows, the deepest value is at where the, the form makes contact with the surface it's resting on. It gets gradually lighter as it goes out towards the, the edge of the cast shadow. And see, what I've done here is pretty much lay out the overall pattern of this thing. And then from here, it's just a matter of building up on the values, deepening them. Two um, additional techniques that I'll share with you is it's a little trick. You can actually vary the tips of your pen as well. So, say for example, um, this is a 0.8. You could use a 0.05 or a lighter or a smaller tip in the light areas. See, see, I made a little mistake there. You can in the light areas, and that helps to to create a a um, a wider range of values for you. And then you can use like a, a, a larger tip in the shadow areas. See, this is a, a one. And it will kind of, you know, help you to um, get the shadow filled in a little bit faster than actually using a small point. So th you can do that if you choose, but you have to be very careful because you can, if you're not, if you don't do it carefully enough, you can actually make it too obvious and then it may create some inconsistencies in your drawing and you may not necessarily want to do that another interesting way this is this is like an advanced challenge if you get to the point where you're really comfortable you can challenge yourself to even start shading with a pattern like for example I'll show you here you can start using instead of just putting the, the 
the stipples randomly, you can now start using patterns. And this is really challenging because when it comes to creating, you know, gradation and value, it can it can really be a little tricky to handle. And it can even, you know, gives a really interesting um, feel to your drawing because the pattern will start, you know, drawing your own sense of design to it. All right, and you can, you know keep building on this and so on right so um, I'm gonna do a drawing down here um, just flesh it out in pencil really quickly and then just give you an idea of how you can proceed with um, doing a drawing Alright, so there we have our little drawing of an eye. And I think I'm gonna use a point eight <laughs> because a point a point oh 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 five would take forever. Alright? So um first what I'm gonna do is just to walk you through, I'm gonna first outline everything. So I'm gonna start by outlining the drawing. Just to give me a sense of where things are, because it's good to keep things confined because if not your drawing can quickly spin out of control so it's good to have an idea of okay where are things because the thing is that's why it's good to have a plan and a process in your drawing and ironically people will think that you're having a plan or process will keep your drawing re contained or um, restricted but it really doesn't actually it, it really allows you to remain in control and also comfortably enough to keep things consistent but it, it at the same time it frees you because you know where things are so you're able to take a chance without feeling you're gonna lose everything all right that's why it's good to have a process but um, you know once you're not you don't plan every single thing you just plan a general layout of where your drawing will go and then you know you just play with that from there all right like for example with this see I did the pencil drawing I have an idea of where things are gonna go but I really don't know what this drawing is going to look like when I'm done. <laughs> okay, and that's the exciting thing about drawing. It's good to have a process, but don't plan every single thing. That's why, like, I generally advise it's good to draw from photographs, you know, but it's always best to draw from life. That way you have more control over photographs when you use them. I think that's pretty much it. So that just gives you an idea of how you can, you know, develop your drawing gradually just using small points. Um, and if you notice in certain areas, I'm like creating a little pattern. See, like that. See, so this kind of, like say for example, I want to create like crow's feet. You know, you can create a little spiral. See, I'm using the line of balance here. And then you can go into that and create the, the gradation. So make them closer here and then as it goes out 
galaxy. They get further and further away from each other. And that helps to create a, a form of of gradation as well. And not only gradation, but it describes the form. See, that's what I did here. It's not only creating gradation, but it's also describing the curvature of the form. The fleshy area right above the eye. Alright? So hopefully that gave you guys some tips and um, you can uh, try it out.